Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. So today I want to briefly talk about um, the new CEO of OpenDoor, Carrie Wheeler. Wheeler. We, we have a new CEO, the CEO of oh, turned CEO. Um, and now OpenDoor is a woman-led business. Uh, and so CEO gender does not weigh into my assessment of any firm. Um, I think she's going to be a great CEO, uh, but I think she's going to be a great CEO because of her skills and because she's a, a finance person who can talk to the finance Wall Street type community. That's why I like her. Uh, you know, I don't think she's a good CEO because she's a woman. I think she's a good CEO because she has the right skills. However, this is not how most people think on Wall Street. Uh, you've had a movement that was really, really strong in 2019 uh, that was all about um, buying firms that were women-led. This was, a, this was a, a, a Wall Street movement that I think is still strong today. Um, and I think short-term, Wall Street may reward us because our CEO at Open Door is a female. Uh, we may be rewarded for, for, by Wall Street for that. Um, and that is because uh, ETF additions, right, whenever they rebalance ETF, um, some ETFs seek women-led businesses. They, they, do, they do seek those. Um, and Open Door, while it would not qualify for a screen prior to uh, her being appointed CEO, now can be screened and qualifies for inclusion um, into certain ETFs. And so there's a plethora of phones and ETFs who specifically seek to add women-led businesses. Um, and even though it doesn't have any impact on my long-term thesis for the stock, I believe this could have a positive short-term impact for the stock. Now, keep in mind, I'm new to short-term movements of stocks. I'm a very long-term person. I typically invest only for the long-term. But I think over the short-term, we could expect open door to be added to certain ESG and certain woman-led ETF. And these ETFs are, are, are not that small. I mean, they're, they're pretty big. Uh, the, the Spider Gender Diversity ETF has more than $200 million in management. Keep in mind that's after the, the, the market crash that we've had, right? So it was probably half half a billion before. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not... It's not um, it's quite a bit. There, there, there's, there, there's more. There's gender and diversity ETF. That's the she ETF that I just talked about. But you have general ESG ETF and, and gender diversity is very big in ESG ETF. And you even have small cap ESG ETFs. Um, and why is this likely to matter? Because uh, it's very, very tough to find women-led businesses. Like these ETFs are on the lookout for women-led businesses. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's still disproportionately a small number of CEOs are, are, are females. And so how small is only 8%. And so you bet that Open Door is going to get noticed for having, for having a female CEO because these ETFs, these managers, these fund managers specifically look for female CEOs. The number of public companies currently led by female CEOs is very small. So this is good for Open Door if they have a female CEO. I believe Open Door may be added to index funds that specifically focus on women leadership. I, I, I believe that. And as some anecdotal evidence as to why I think this may happen, and you know, this is not academic research, this is mostly anecdotal, but I tried to do a little research as to what ETF uh, owns Open. And so Open Door currently only has four ESG ETF owning it. Um, compared to like your standard widespread ETF, Open Door has 27 standard widespread ETF owning it, which gives us an uh, ESG to vanilla ETF, as they call them, of a 4 to 27. So they have a, a very, very tiny ratio of ESG ETF placements compared to the broad based ETFs. But look at companies in the same sector, in the real estate sector. You know, Open Door buys a lot of single family homes. Uh, and keep in mind, I'm very limited in how many companies I can find. Uh, it actually took me like an hour to find these two companies. It's very, it's a, it's very hard to find. There's a few of them, uh, um, but not not that many. So Ventas, right, as a female CEO, um, it's a REIT in the healthcare sector, and their ESG to value ratio is a 0.5. So, and if you look here, if you look at this, they have yeah, yeah, 29 ESG ETFs owning the stock. 
as a result of, uh, I mean, because, you know, correlation is not causation, but the, the fact that they have a, a female CEO tells me that, yeah, well, actually, look, they have, they have more ETFs, ESG ETFs owning the stock, and they also have a female CEO. And the same is true for Regency centers. Uh, it's the real estate again, but in the retail sector, this time with a female CEO, and the ESG to vanilla ratio is 0.31. So this is anecdotal, right? I don't have 20 observations. I only have two other observations. So I don't have any statistical significance here. I know my methodology is anecdotal. But still, um, I think uh, I think it's setting up for a strong hypothesis. I could make, if I was an academic uh, research, or I could make a strong hypothesis uh, that uh, actually uh, female CEO-led businesses are more likely to be added to ESG indexes and to uh, women leadership indexes, um, and again, this is this is a, a a part of Wall Street that is that is pretty pretty popular, and I think could help the stock in the short term. Um, also, note for is the fact that there's a lot of retail uh, shareholders as well as pension funds that specifically seek women-led businesses. And remember the article that I showed you earlier: so few, they are very 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 hard to find. You know. Um, in fact, when I look at my portfolio, Open Doors the only one, which is very interesting. So few of them. Um, and it's a major trend in Wall Street, in traditional Wall Street. Uh, therefore, I think, I think this could help us in the short term. And don't forget, you know, you may say, oh, all of these um, funds are, are, are small relatively to like the spider ETF, like the S&P 500 ETF, in which you're not, we are not, by the way. Uh, but like they're small compared like to a total uh, stock index fund. I mean, sure, they're small, but don't forget that, especially for a stock like Open Door, trading happens at the edge, which means that the stock price can move with relatively few shares changing hands. So again, this is my attempt at understanding short term. I usually focus on long term of this channel. But my hypothesis, based on my anecdotal evidence, is that uh, over the short term, I think... Open door could see some benefits from having a female CEO because the, there's so many funds, so many ETFs on the lookout specifically about that. And so, in conclusion, don't forget that this was just my attempt to think short term. It's very hard to do. It's very hard to do. I'm I typically I'm more of a long term person, uh, and I really don't care about short term prices so even even if it's if this leads the stock to go up by like a dollar or something it doesn't matter to me uh, i'm gonna i'm just gonna still hold and buy the stock and that is the proof right i mean if you've held the stock now it's 90 percent down you're gonna keep investing in this stock regardless but just it's just a little update to say that there, there may be some hope on the horizon from the fact that we have a female ceo um, on a related note, I think she's going to be a great CEO. Um, she 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 will know how to speak to Wall Street, and she will be a great CEO. Um, so anyways, none of this has been investment advice, never investment advice. It's just entertainment. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate if you can like and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter at Bitvin Thank you so much, and have a great day.